Well, we're back working with uh, sensors. This week we're talking about infrared sensors, IR sensors. And because these are in no way, shape, or form connected to the track, track current or anything like that, they will work on any type of railroad. Very much like last week's sensor, the magnetic sensor using reed switches. So the application is very similar to magnets and reed switches. Let's just recap quickly. This is the LGB system where they actually offered uh, a reed switch that mounted to the track. This is it here. Very, very expensive. These things sell for $35. And they only work on number one gauge track. This is the alternative that we suggested. You can buy these on Amazon five for 750 and they're exactly, spe uh, the, the size of them is perfect for HO track. The significant downsides of these systems is these little teeny magnets here have to be mounted to the bottom of uh, the locomotive or whatever other piece of equipment you want to detect so that as the magnet passes over the reed switch, it closes the contacts in the reed switch and therefore the train is detected. Another downside is the reed switch can't handle very much current, so you have to use them in conjunction with uh, a relay or some other kind of circuitry. If you were to, say, try to operate a switch machine directly from the reed switch, well, you'd fry the, the reed switch. This is the very, very expensive LGB relay that operates with their reed switches uh, on their system. There is also a relay made by Atlas uh, that works well with other scales and gauges. Um, basically the exact same thing. And then there are other latching relays that you can buy on, on Amazon that are just sort of generic latching relays. Let's move on then to infrared sensors, IR sensors. And in a lot of ways, these things work just like the magnetic reed switches do. They don't require anything to be mounted on the train, and so that's a plus. But like the magnetic system, they simply mount on the track or next to the track and don't require tying into your track electrics in any way. So in that case, they'll, they'll work brilliantly for battery operated trains, DCC trains, DC, AC, three rail, you name it, they work fine. Now here's an infrared sensor that we're all pretty much familiar with. This is a TV remote. And where some TV remotes work from radio waves, RF, radio frequency, the vast majority of them use infrared. Now, the way they work is mounted in the end of this is a very, very bright infrared LED. And as we pointed out before, all diodes emit infrared light. You may not be aware of it because A, you can't see it, and B, most diodes are sealed in plastic where you wouldn't see the light even if you could see the light. Anyway, if your eyes could see the infrared light, you'd realize that when you hit any of the buttons on your remote, there's an insanely bright light that comes out of the end of this, like a flashlight that's illuminating the, the other side of the room. I mean, it's a very, very bright light. Moreover, it's flashing at a very high frequency, so fast that even if you could see the infrared light, you wouldn't be aware of the fact that it's pulsating on and off. But it's sending a digital signal over to the sensor on the television set in order to communicate with the, uh, the television. This, of course, requires that you point your remote at the sensor on the television. And, in fact, if somebody were to walk through blocking the light from reaching the sensor, the, the remote's going to stop working. Here's another use for infrared LEDs. Security cameras, if you'll notice, there's an array of LEDs all the way around the camera lens. And those are, again, very, very bright infrared LEDs that provide a light source for the camera at night that you're not even aware of because, again, your eyes can't see the infrared. But the reality is that this is an insanely bright light illuminating the area in front of the camera. 
Now there's a lot of associated circuitry when using an infrared sensor. And for that reason, I think it makes the most sense to shop around for the different systems that are available to use on your model railroad. Find one that you think is going to uh, serve your purpose, suit your needs, as it were, and then stick with that particular brand because there may not be any cross compatibility between them. Moreover, designing and building your own may not be an option unless, of course, you, uh, you have an engineering degree from MIT. This is the Azatrax system, and I don't mean to promote that or anything. I've never used it. I've never used an IR system on my railroad, although I intend to. But this is just one that has jumped out at me at the train shows and so on. Seems like it's a, a decent brand. Don't know anything about it. If you have a, an opinion on these or a brand that you like, do jump into the comments. The most basic use of an infrared sensor is to simply detect when a train is coming by. And there's two different ways of going about that. The first way is to set up something very much like the TV remote, where you have a, an LED on one side of the track and a sensor on the other side of the track. And then when the train passes between the two, it will block the signal and therefore activate the sensor. So the key takeaway here is that the sensor is active when the signal is blocked, not when the signal is passing to the sensor. It's also important that the sensor be shielded from outside light sources because there is infrared coming from the sun and from other sources, and that will confuse the sensor if that stray light is falling on the sensor. So it has to be uh, shielded in some way from stray light sources. Okay, the exact opposite of this, uh, instead of being an across the track sensing system, it's a reflection system and that can be mounted near the track or under the track. The goal being that you're shining the, uh, the infrared light up from an LED and when that light bounces off of a train passing by, it'll fall back onto the sensor. So in this case, the sensor is active when the light reaches it, and therefore the electronics have to be the exact inverse of what we had with the across the track system. The sensor is active when light is falling on it. Now here in the diagram, we've got the sensor and the LED mounted absolutely parallel to each other underneath the track. And they say that this will work best in the larger scales, S and larger. In the smaller scales, not so much. So for the smaller scales, uh, HO and smaller, they're angling both the, uh, the infrared LED and the infrared sensor so that they point upward toward a common point under the train. And they don't have to be mounted directly between the rails. They can be mounted anywhere the light will bounce off of the train and fall back onto the sensor. Moreover, the LED and the sensor are typically not the sort of thing you want to be seen on your model railroad. They don't look very prototype. And so you probably want to disguise them in some way that might be simpler if they're off to one side. And you may be using some of these very, very expensive but really nice uh, plastic roadbed, integral roadbed track sections that are so popular right now. And so you don't want to drill a hole through your plastic roadbed. Uh, so in this case, you can do an angled installation just off to the side of the roadbed. Now I mentioned earlier that these sensors require some very specific electronics uh, in order to function. And those electronics are very purpose oriented. So depending on what you want the sensor to do, the electronic set that's going to be paired with it is going to be completely unique to that purpose. So you may be using uh, an IR sensor for an automatic reversing loop. There would be special electronics just for achieving that. 
And that, of course, would be different depending on the type of railroad. If you're running a DCC railroad versus a DC railroad versus a three rail AC railroad, uh, all of these electronics need to be paired to the function that you're trying to achieve. So there's uh, electronic sets that can be used for operating a double pull, double throw latching relay, as we've talked about. Also, electronics for running a stall motor switch machine or a solenoid type switch machine. So this is why it's important to shop around before committing yourself to one manufacturer or another. Make sure that the manufacturer you have selected offers the, the electronics that you're going to need. So just as we mentioned with the LGB systems, this may be used to control a loop-to-loop single-track dog bone railroad that's fully automated. It may be used on a traction system to run a trolley down to the far end and then automatically reverse and come back. They can be used in any number of different ways. Some of them offer compatibility with Arduino for uh, designing your own robotics. Uh, some of them can communicate with your DCC digital command control. Uh, there's just a whole variety of different systems uh, that you can purchase using infrared sensors. And some of these manufacturers, like Azatrax, offer other electronics that don't even work in conjunction with infrared sensors. This, uh, this one in the lower left works entirely on a three rail system by detecting continuity between the outside rails. And I know some people like to design and build their own electronics. Here we have a latching double pole, double throw with an LED indicator, pretty straightforward and simple but uh, you probably would want to uh, shop around and find an electronic set that just simply works for you. But if electronics are your thing and you want to design and build your own system, well, have at it. Now, if we use an uh, IR sensor on our railroad, and I, I kind of plan on that, I think it would be fun, we will be using it just to activate a crossing signal, and that's probably the most common use for this. As a tracks here has uh, electronics just for operating different crossing signals, whether they're LED crossing signals or using incandescent lamps, uh, depends on what you're using as the electronics that you wanna pair with. And then they even suggest certain uh, signals that you can purchase from Walther's and pair those with the electronics. So when using an IR sensor for a crossing, you want to position the sensor well back from the crossing so that the crossing is activated before the train gets to the crossing. In this case, they're also using the tortoise uh, gate motor for lowering the gates, and there's a, an electronic set available for operating that motor. Now, because the sensor is mounted well back from the crossing, that means that as soon as the caboose passes the sensor, the gates will go back up, which is not what you want. And so there's actually a delay circuit built in there with an adjustment so that you can keep the gates lowered and the crossing active for some period of time after the caboose crosses the sensor. And then you have a corresponding sensor on the other side of the crossing for trains approaching from the other direction. Probably the most uh, complicated and advanced use of these sensors, uh, they can be tied into the DCC controls on a digital railroad and can operate a very complex system of train signaling. So again, be sure to shop around for a system that suits your needs uh, while you're designing your railroad so that right from the outset you're purchasing compatible equipment. You may have more questions. Do jump into the comments. And if you read somebody else's questions in here and you know the answers, do jump in and help people out, answer questions, start up a discussion because, hey, that's fun. 
If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. It helps out the channel and it also helps you out because it helps the, the algorithm, if you will, link you to the videos that you like. So hit the like button and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And the easy way to subscribe is with the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring and we will see you here on Sunday because Karen and I have some fun stuff. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.